So that's one of the main things. You want to make sure it's clean before you start doing body work and painting, you know? Smile. Screws like this, what I like to do is hit it with the wire brush, the wire wheel to make them look new again and then you could spray paint them black if you want and screw them in. Sometimes they look good just by cleaning them up. Looks pretty good. has been damaged so what we're gonna do is heat it up quick with a heat gun if you don't have a heat gun you could use your mother's dryer or to heat it and bend this back in place here okay the whole thing is wrinkled in like that initially okay while we put the plastic pieces in here and while we glue it in this is the 3M08115 bonding adhesive, perfect for plastic repair, body kits. Yeah, if you mix that together, it'll get really hard. Yeah, our back is completely dried up. Rule one when doing body work on a brand new project is you want to go around the car and mark the defects. I'm just put next there. You got this line across the side here. We're not gonna worry about all the little spot welds. You know, I'm not looking to put a $10,000 paint job on this truck. I just wanna make it look cool, make it look nice. You may be in a position where you wanna do that and do every little nook and cranny, then you do that. For every golf ball size of filler, okay, imagine that in a golf ball, the amount. We're gonna put about six to eight drops of hardener. And it's not like a science where you have to have that much in it. If you put more than you're supposed to, it's gonna dry quick. If you put less than you're supposed to, it's gonna take longer to set up, which is good because you can play with it a little bit longer and shape it. But if you don't add enough, then you're gonna have a problem because it'll never dry. High, it's cool because you can sand it down. But if it's low, you're gonna have to add more. Right. And it doesn't matter. On a side note, if you wanted to do something custom, you could fill that, get rid of the line. Long strokes, you know you'll feel it quicker. You feel it, right? I do. We'll recoat this and we'll make sure we get a nice corner when we're done.
All right, so just mixing up some 2K primer filler here. I'm using Advantage, uh, affordable stuff, but the primer is not bad. So these are some awesome new spray guns out in the market, Adam spray guns. They were kind enough to give me a few to review and check out. Uh, I totally love them. Um, when spraying any kind of 2K primer, filler primer, you want to use a 1.8 to 2.0 tip kit for the material to come out. If you don't, it's going to come out very dry and cake up coming out of your 1.3 or 1.4 tip. So it's not recommended. The only way to do that is to basically reduce it you know, 15% roughly, maybe even 20, at around around 10 to 15%, so it could come out of your smaller tip size if that's the only thing you have to work with. When you lay the second coat on, that the first coat is dry. You don't wanna be painting your second coat, spraying your second coat over a wet coat, right? You gotta give it some time to dry, and that's usually about 15, 25 minutes, depending on ambient temperature. Um, it's probably around 85 here, so we got, uh, you know 15 minutes and we're ready for our second coat once your primer is done You want to go over all of your work with a little bit of glaze putty if you see some deep imperfections and uh, Pinholes or scratches you fill it up with your glaze putty uh, Let that dry. I think I'm using a 320 grit here uh, to basically cut down the imperfections the orange peel the glaze putty uh, Once we do that then we're gonna wash everything down the whole project down with 400 grit wet sand then mask up for paint exactly what i'm doing here because we're doing door jams okay sometimes it's good to have small kids because they can be on the other side here and then they can help you push the tape like this So the lower third of the truck is going to be a silver base coat. So what I did was narrow my fan down to about three to four inches so I can control my material flow so I don't have a lot of base coat and overspray flying in areas where I don't want it. And when you narrow your fan pattern, you want to make sure to lower your air pressure because if you don't, it's going to squeeze out a lot faster. You're condensing the stream to a point and it comes out at a very at a higher pressure. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure to do that. Here what I'm doing is uh, we used our fine line tape 1 8 inch wide uh, to basically make our line. Then now I'm using painter's tape just to start masking it and covering it. So when we spray our teal, which is gonna be going in the middle here, um, we can cover all of our silver base coat at the bottom. We are rocking it, rocking it with the Atom X20 spray gun, spraying our teal base coat here. You could blast it with clear coat. Now, you can see here that the silver is kind of showing through on the bottom. That's because our undercoat silver is darker than the white. Not a problem. You know, this is the first coat. Once you go over it two, three coats, you will see it cover up. So if you're experiencing this problem, or if you see this, it just means that you don't have enough base on it, okay? Don't sweat it, just put more coats of color until you cover. You don't wanna run out while you're in the middle of doing a panel. You know, especially like a large hood or a roof, you know, in especially during clear coat, right? So always make sure your um, cup is filled and topped off uh, when you're doing large panels. When spraying base coat, this is the time where you could take your time, make sure that you have enough paint on your panels before you move on. All right, so this is pretty much my second coat here. Like tiger stripes usually happen when you have heavy metallic and you, you don't have your gun set up properly and you're just spraying at low pressure, super close to the car. 
you know, that's when you can have problems. But if you have your normal high pressure spraying base coat, you want to be spraying at about 26 to 28 PSI at your, uh, at your gauge, you know, and um, you shouldn't have any problems. All right, so for more training on this, uh, don't forget to go to learnautobodyandpaint.com, get your free auto body and paint guide. We got more training videos, we got email series, a whole bunch of stuff that'll help you get started uh, with auto body. Take your time, make sure it's all covered before you move on. You know, it's not a race, we wanna make sure we do a good job. Um, and it's looking good. You know, this is, this is uh, the last point before clear coat. You know, and this is where you could screw up if you're in a rush. You know, you can have not enough base coat at this point where if you look in the sun later, you're like, oh crap, I didn't lay enough base coat here. And if you have your clear coat on it, and it's too late. You basically got to re-sand it down and uh, rebase it and re-clear it, right? So, um, and lighting is important. Make sure you have a lot of fluorescent lights around, if possible, uh, to, so, so you can see. Because if you can't see what you're doing, you're going to have a mistake, right? You're going to have spots where you don't have enough paint on it or you missed an area, you know what I mean? All right, we're just putting back uh, some of our base coat back in our can here. And you could do this because there's no activator. There's no hardener in base coat, it's just reducer. So you can pour it back in the can and close it and it'll last you for years. Um, if you hold on to it for five years, you're probably gonna need to add a little bit of reducer to it uh, to basically thin it out a little bit because it does evaporate a little bit over time. So here we are, we're peeling off our paper quick, getting ready uh, for our clear coat phase. Uh, but before that, we're going to make sure to tack the entire project down uh, with our tack rag. Remember, base coat, you can tack between base coats. Once you start clearing, you cannot tack in between clear coat, okay? You can see what you could do with your own two hands uh, by customizing if you want to, right? I gave you the basics. I show you how to do everything. You can do it depending on, you know, how anal you want to get is up to you ready everything's ready for clear coat okay these mirrors are ready for clear coat all right so when spraying clear coat you want to up the pressure from your normal base coat spraying okay base coat 26 to 28 clear coat you want to up it to around 29 sometimes even 30 okay um, I think I'm pretty much spraying around 29 psi here I'm using the almighty Atom X 21 spray gun amazing spray gun I met these people at SEMA last year uh, Atom spray guns check them out online uh, this is the X21 they're actually making a, a version that might replace this one uh, it's even better lighter it's called the Atom X27 so check that out. Um, they also sell at Zula.com, Z-O-O-L-A-A.com. These are the only spray guns that I'm spraying with currently. And um, they're literally Japanese and German quality for one third the cost. Uh, American made, American designed, but made in uh, Asia to basically keep costs down and uh, deliver maximum performance. You know, the best clear coat jobs are basically one big run. So a lot of people get dry clear coat jobs because they're afraid of running, all right? Let me tell you something, runs are not a big deal, all right? You wanna lay it on as wet as possible so you have room to basically cut and buff. You know you got enough clear coat on it. As long as you got your pressure setting set up correctly, as long as you mixed your clear coat up correctly, and as long as your distance is at a good distance and you're not fluctuating, um, with your panel just keep it straight look how i'm spraying here keep it keep the momentum at a good speed use the lighting to make sure it's laying on glossy if you see any dry spots go back and hit it immediately you don't want to see dry spots at this stage don't be afraid to put some clear coat on it and this is the first coat second coat you're going to want to lay it on even heavier right and uh, just try to avoid running and the way to do that is to basically have good flow distance from panel and uh just do it all right don't just just do it you're not gonna learn unless you do it 
Okay, don't be afraid of running. Everybody gets runs, all right? Even I get runs sometimes. But uh, like I said, it's better to buff out a run than a dry spot, okay? Dry spots are a pain in the butt. Sometimes too dry, you gotta re-clear it. We're not worried about the center of the bed because the whole bed is gonna be raptor lined with u Paul. Really good stuff, you'll see it. Okay, so we're almost done with the project here. Uh, starting to put some of the pieces back on it, uh, the bumper cover and whatnot. Then we're gonna get ready uh, for our U-Paul Raptor liner. All right, once we do that, it's gonna start to come together and look really, really cool. Um, first time I've used this stuff, Raptor liner. Um, I think it was about 140 bucks for the kit. And I like it, it sprays on really thick and it's a good product for undercoating. Well, not really undercoating, for bed liner and also under the wheel wells. So I basically did the wheel wells with this stuff because I had some leftover and underneath uh, some parts of the frame and it came out really, really good. I'm very happy with the product here. And again, same thing with this. You wanna remove the masking tape before it totally dries or else you're gonna have a problem removing your tape. Awesome, almost done. We're putting some cool pinstripe on here. Uh, it's called Pro Stripe, really easy vinyl pinstripe to just kind of do some quick details to your paint job if you want to. I use this stuff a lot. Um, a lot of people like this on classic cars. It's not like painting and brushing on pinstripe. You know, it's a lot easier. Um, and then you're cutting. Uh, what I've done before is forget to do this, open the door, and then basically pull the pinstripe and mess it up. So you want to make sure to cut those uh, the gapping areas before you open your door, right? So this gives it a quick custom touch. We went all around the truck with it. We did the bed, uh, the bottom section as well on the silver and teal, not just the white and teal. And uh, it came out really, really nice. So Maya's doing a great job. She's pressing the decal on and then you want to remove the film. There's a clear film that protects it um, when it comes out of the, the roll, right? So you push, make sure the pinstriping is where you want it. Put it on, push, and then peel the, the plastic off. Because if you don't properly do that, you're gonna peel the pinstripe off. You know what I mean? So that's pretty much it. It's looking fabulous complete paint job done. I hope you enjoyed this process here. If you want to learn more, check out learnautobodyandpaint.com and get a free 85 page auto body manual as well as some free video training lessons through the email series. So sign up for the free series there. I think you're going to love it. Oh, I almost forgot to mention, check out VIP. So when you go to learnautobodyandpaint.com, click on VIP auto body course and in VIP, we're gonna give you so much more. If you thought this was cool, imagine this times 200. 
And uh, you're also gonna get step-by-step -step downloadable manuals, step-by-step -step checklists, guides, and interact with thousands of VIPs across the world uh, through the private Facebook group or forums, if you like forums. And you also get to get a free VIP shirt, check details, and also win free spray guns. It's Tony, please like, share, subscribe. Talk to you soon, bye.